Hi, I'm Fritjam Kola, and this is the second part on Unreal PCG, which just kind of came out a few days ago in uh, Unreal 5.2 preview, and it's Unreal's new procedural content generation system. Since Epic said it's very experimental, uh, you can pretty much be sure that stuff is going to go out of date at some point. So if you're watching this in the future, uh, be aware of that. Okay. In this one, we'll look at splines. So I'm going to create a new graph, and that is, we'll just call that PCG spline. And in that, I'm going to use a node called get spline data. And the way this works is you can give it kind of, you can kind of tell it where to get the spline data from. By default, it is set to self. So if you add spline components to the PCG volume, it'll take those. Uh, in our case, and I think in most cases, you'll probably want to get uh, all world actors, which means it'll search through all the actors uh, and check if they have spline components. In this case, uh, you can choose by tag, by name, or by class. I'm going to go by tag and going to call it you know, our test spline. And then I'm going to create a blueprint. So new new blueprint and we'll go for actor and call that BP um, our spline. And in the class, I'm going to do nothing else but add a spline component. I'm going to disable tick because we don't need it. And in the defaults under tags, I'm going to tag it as test spline. And now this data should kind of get get harvested by the PCG. Um, to get extra points on the spline, we use a spline sampler. And on that, we can have kind of different methods of sampling points on the spline. First of all, I'm going to set that up. So I'm going to drag in the PCG volume in the scene and I'm going to add our spline. I'm going to create a few points, like modify the spline shape a little. So there we go. And back in our uh, graph, I'm going to enable the debug on the spline sampler and I'm going to actually make the graph generate the procedural stuff. So there we go. You can already see there are some points being generated on the spline. And they usually have the size or the length of how much of the segment they are taking up. Um, so there's a different, there are a few different settings. For example, you can use distance which will place points along the spline at a very specific distance. Uh, if you increase that, it'll be less points. If you lower it, it will be more points. If you close your spline, so in the spline, uh, go to close loop, there you go, close loop, then you can also use on interior and that will spawn points inside the spline. So it'll sort of do a 2D projection and fill it up with points. Uh, to see the points better, I'm going to plug this into a transform points node so that I can scale them a little smaller. I'm going to make sure it's a fixed scale and we'll just go like 0.2. And then, well, that's maybe a little small, a bit bigger. So there we go. And get that point, uh, get that spline up a little so we can see all the points. Now, if you want to do something like a forest, so what I did for my forest video is I essentially spawned forest biome in these in these splines so i can just have different patches down uh, but what i want to do is have the forest sort of gradually grow towards the center so like the edge of the forest should be smaller shrubs and trees and the center should be bigger trees 
and less drops. And what I did is on the spline sampler, you can map sort of the the distance from the border to the center of the spline. Um, for that to work, you need to use this curve on the spline sampler, which is the interior density falloff curve. And if you add, let's say two points, one at zero, zero, and one at one, one, that's just a linear progression, then you can see the density attribute is set one at the very edge and zero at the very center. Uh, you could obviously remap that. There's a, a node called just density remap. In our case, I'm gonna quickly put that in. Uh, so this is essentially the start and the end input and then the start and the end output. And what you can do is simply reverse these values like so. Or do it directly on the spline uh, by <laughs> reversing uh, these two. So like 0, 1 and 1, 0. There we go, same same result. Now, uh, while there are many, many different ways to remap stuff, uh, this has one problem, and that is when the as the spline gets bigger, this like density curve is pretty much uh, like normalized by the size of the spline. So as you make the spline bigger, the curve, like the distance gets longer. Um, what I want to do for my forest is sort of have a fixed, fixed distance from the edge of the forest to where the center starts essentially. And if you make bigger forests, they shouldn't have like a longer fade than the, the smaller forest. Uh, because even if you make a very small one, uh, you still get the full gradient. So for that to work, what I did is I take another spline sampler, use the same spline essentially, but this one uh, will put on on spline. So this will create lots of points around the spline, around the edge. And then what uh, we can do is do a distance, so spatial distance, from the center points, like this grid, to the border points. I'm gonna put that in here. And you can check set density on distance. And in this case, it looks like nothing happens just because the maximum distance is really large. Uh, so we'll set it to like a thousand for now. And then you can see it now has uh, a, a very, like this, this distance from zero to one is a thousand. And it doesn't matter how big or small you make a forest, it's gonna be the exact same distance all around. So that's a really cool thing. And then the other thing I did is I created paths that cut through the forest. And for that, I'm gonna create, just for the sake of um, demonstration, another blueprint and we'll call it uh, VP path spline. I'm essentially do the same thing. Uh, disable tick and add a spline component. And for this one, I'm gonna enable um, the scale visualization. So this is sort of like how wide the road is and we'll set it to 100. And we'll also tag, we'll also tag the actor and call it path. And then back in our procedural graph, we'll add another combo of spline data and spline sampler. But in this case, we'll set the tag for the spline data to path, so it can only pick up on the path. And I'm gonna put that in the scene real quick. I'm gonna drag it like through our forest. Wow pretending it's a forest. And then 
what I'm going to do with this spline is essentially create points along along the curve and then subtract them from the points in the forest. So literally cut out points. So for that, uh, we'll make a uh, what's it called? Like a bounce modifier. That should be this one. Uh, and what this does, it uh, each point, each, each point size has a min max bounce. So it's essentially uh, the dimension of the point. And what I'm going to do is I want to make the points that we sample on the spline as wide as the path itself and then a bit taller so it overlaps all the points. So I'm going to debug this one. And the first thing I'm going to do is bounce uh, to the side, making it 100. So this is um, min max, so it can be like gets a bit variation if you want to, but we want to make it like the same size. Oh, sorry, not x. X is the forward axis, but um, these two should be up and down and left and right. There you go. Now we have essentially a bunch of cubes or like uh, other <laughs> shape that is not a cube but long scale cube, um, and you can see they go along all the all the path. And the cool thing is they adhere to the scale of the spline. So if I take this and I actually make this bigger, you can see the cubes also change in size. So you can do different path um, width essentially. Okay, you can see the points aren't intersecting the cubes. Uh, and I think that's because this the spline is higher. So we'll like move it kind of more to the bottom. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, I think I made this plan not not two D, so it's like a bit wonky. Uh, well, that's okay. What we can do in this case is we'll just increase the bounce height, and that should you know intersect all the other points. So to get rid of the points in here, what we can use is a difference, and we want to essentially subtract the points in the spline, like the forest, the tree points. Um, oh no, we want to subtract the path points from the tree points. And for that to work, you need to set the density function to binary. And I'm going to stop previewing that and start previewing. Oops. Got my hotkeys messed up. And there you can see it's already cutting down points, everything that overlaps. So I'm going to disable this preview. And you can see there's a path through the forest, or alleged forest. And yeah, that's kind of how you can work with splines. Um, there are a few caveats. So one, if I want to make like a second path, so I'm just going to duplicate this and move it over here. And you can see nothing is happening. That's because uh, if you do get spline data, there's a checkbox which is select multiple. So by default, it will just take the first actor I can find and use that. But if you want to have more than one, you need to check this, and it will get all of the actors. And there you can see uh, when sampling the spline points from the spline data, we get both of them. And similarly for for the forest patch, I'd, I'd say if you want to have more than one. So like, actually, oh no, actually like this, and you need to close, close loop, and in here select multiple, and there you can see it places them all. Uh, another caveat I found is when you scale spline actors or actors containing splines, um, it will sort of use the spline scale for transforming the points. So if I make this very big, you can see the spacing is not in world space. It is actually in like local space. So it just gets bigger and the points get bigger as well. So be aware of that. And another thing, sometimes I've had it happen that uh, despite using select multiple and doing all these operations, it would just pick up on one of these splines. Um, and the fix for that is to put a union where, like, right after the spline sampling. 
so I'm sure that's something that's probably due to the whole system being still experimental. Um, and maybe Epic is planning on something like having IDs for different splines and maybe there's you know something under the hood that I'm not aware of, but this sort of should just fix it. Uh, and this also concludes this plan tutorial. Um, and I hope I see you in the next video. Bye.